Hi, we're out on our range today, and we're talking about the degree to which barrel length affects handgun velocity, to which you might ask, why? And the answer is because a lot of people have contacted me asking me to do this demonstration, so here we are. Now, I have to preface this by discussing two things. One, how does barrel length affect your handgun velocity? And two, why is this particular demonstration really difficult to do, at least difficult to do correctly? Okay, in discussing how barrel length affects handgun velocity, the only thing I can tell you is the way I learned it, according to my education, my training, my experience. As I explain this, there will be people who will say, no, I'm totally wrong, it doesn't work that way. I can only tell you the way I learned it. And the way I learned it is, when you have a handgun and you fire it, as soon as that firing pin hits that primer, detonating it, it starts the combustion of your propellant. Long before that combustion is completed, as soon as it starts, it starts building up pressure and starts forcing that projectile down the barrel. As it travels down the barrel, more and more pressure is built up while it's in the barrel until the projectile clears the muzzle and all of that pressure is relieved. So if you have a longer barreled handgun, then when I fire this, as our propellant begins to combust, pushing that projectile down the barrel, it's a longer barrel. The projectile is in the barrel for a greater length of time. We're talking about thousandths of a second, but still a longer amount of time. Thus, we have more complete combustion, more pressure built up, more velocity. Now, if your barrel is too long, you can complete your combustion before that projectile gets to the end of the barrel. So that last part of the barrel will put drag on it and will lower your velocity. But when we're talking about typical handguns with typical handgun length barrels, then most of the time, not always, but most of the time, the longer your barrel, the greater velocity you'll get up to a point. So to do this demonstration, would seem easy. I've got my Ruger SP-101 357 Magnum with a two and a quarter inch barrel, which I could compare to my Ruger Security 6 357 Magnum with a four inch barrel, which I could compare to my Smith & Wesson 686 6 with a six inch barrel. Except there are other factors that go into velocity besides just barrel length. Now, a while ago, we did a demonstration with these two revolvers, where I loaded them with identical ammunition shot them at the chronograph, and got significantly different velocities. Now, they're both 38 Special and loaded with identical ammunition. They're both Smith & Wesson. They both have 1 and 7 8 inch barrels. They were fired at the same chronograph, within just a couple of minutes of each other, from the same distance, but we got different velocities. Because there are other factors besides barrel length that affect that velocity. Factors including the depth and design of your rifling, differences in the distance between your cylinder and your forcing cone, and the list could go on. However, I did find that when I did the same comparison using two handguns of identical make and model with identical barrel lengths loaded with identical ammunitions, I got identical velocity. So to do this comparison and measure only your barrel length, not the other factors, what I would have to have is multiple handguns of the same caliber, same make, and same model. That could be difficult to do. So what's the solution? You guessed it. The Dan Wesson Pistol Pack, which I just picked up from Lincoln City Sporting Goods in Lincoln City, Oregon. Thank you, guys. Let's take a close-up look at it. The Dan Wesson 357 Magnum Pistol Pack has a revolver with four different barrels, two and a half, four, six, and eight inches. I will change these barrels using this tool, and because I have a feeler gauge that will allow me to get consistent distance between the cylinder and the forcing cone, in this case two thousandths of an inch, I know it will be the same every time. And of course, all of these barrels were made by the same manufacturer in some provenience to each other. So using this setup will allow us to control for those variables. So let's do some tedious chronograph analysis, and as always, I leave that segment in because so many people ask me to, but if you don't want to sit through the tedious chronograph segment, I invite you to fast forward to the part where you see me standing next to the chart with the numbers on it. 
So I have the chronograph set up at seven yards. I have the Dan Wesson revolver fitted with the two and a half inch barrel. And we'll start with this Fiocchi 357 Magnum 142 grain full metal jacket. Eleven oh two. Eleven twenty six. Eleven forty three. Eleven seventeen. Eleven thirty nine. And ten ninety three. Now I'm going to shoot a couple more shots. Now I've reloaded, let's shoot a few more shots. 1160. 1145. And 1130. Now let's switch to our four inch barrel, see how the results compare. Now we'll try Remington Green and Yellow Box 357 Magnum 180 grain semi-jacketed hollow point. 1102. 1067. 1049. 1044, 1125, and 1083. I'm going to shoot a couple more shots. 1087. 1082 and 1057. Now let's switch to the 4 inch barrel. So now let's try our Fiocchi 142 grain ammo with our 4 inch barrel. 1218. 1234. 1238, 1225, 1228, and 1307. Now let's try our Remington ammunition. And now our Remington 180 grain with four inch barrel. 1188, 1194, 1158, 1191, 1189, And 1185. Now let's go up to the six inch barrel. And now our Fiocchi ammunition, 142 grain projectile with our six inch barrel. 1272. 1274. 1313. 1272, 1299, and 1255. Let's try the Remington ammo. And now Remington with this 180 grain projectile, six inch barrel. 1260, 1262. 1252, 1255, and 
1256. Let's try our 8 inch barrel. And now our Fioki ammunition with the 8 inch barrel. Thirteen fifty four. Twelve ninety six. Twelve seventy three. Thirteen sixty two. Thirteen thirty nine. Now again, I'm going to fire a couple more shots. Twelve seventy seven, thirteen twenty eight, and thirteen oh three. Now let's try our Remington ammunition. And now our Remington ammunition with the eight inch barrel. Twelve forty two. 1304 1274 Duplicate 1274 1242 and 1290 Now again, I'm going to fire a couple more shots. When all the readings are consistent, they're pretty close, you don't need to fire a lot of shots. When they seem to have a lot of variation, I want to fire more shots. 1283. 1268. And 1257. Now, finally, let's go crunch the numbers. Well, I crunched the numbers and here's the results. And remember, this comes with the caveats that chronographs don't always agree with each other and certain environmental factors like ambient temperature and elevation can affect chronograph results. We also have to remember that our Remington ammunition had 180 grain projectiles, while our Fiocchi ammunition had 142 grain projectiles. With a lighter projectile, we would expect to see higher velocities, and that's what we got. But the real question here is, to what degree are we increasing velocity as we increase barrel length? Well, with our Fiocchi ammunition in a 2.5 inch barrel, we saw a velocity of 1128. When we go to our 4 inch barrel, gaining an inch and a half, we see 1241. That's a gain of 113 feet per second. I'm going to say that's significant. But when we go from our 4 to our 6 inch barrel, we go from a velocity of 1241 to 1280. That's only a gain of 39 feet per second. It's debatable how significant that is. And when we go from our 6 to our 8, we go from 1280 to 1316, we gain 36 feet per second. Again, that's more, but significantly so, debatable. Now, when we look at our Remington ammunition, we see that with our 2.5 inch barrel, we get a velocity of 1077. When we go to our 4 inch barrel, we get 1184. That's a gain of 107 feet per second. Again, that's significant. Now, when we go from our 4 to our 6 inch barrel, we go from 1184 to 1256. That's a gain of 72 feet per second. Again, what I would call significant. But when we go from our 6 to our 8 inch barrel, we go from 1256 to 1270. That's a gain of only 14 feet per second. That's within the variation of one round to the next. Not enough difference to make a difference. But what we're really seeing here is, as we get a longer barrel, we get greater velocity. But we're also seeing, as the barrel gets longer and longer, diminishing returns. Yes, I know. So is going from the 6 to the 8 inch barrel really worth it? In some cases I'd say no, in other cases I'd say maybe, depending on your ammunition. But that brings up the question, if once you get to beyond the 6 inch barrel, you're really seeing diminishing returns, why would anyone go with an 8 or even a 10 inch barrel? There could be many reasons for that such as someone might just think that the 8-inch barrel looks cooler. There's also the reason that, depending on your firearm, that longer barrel could make it heavier or more front-heavy, 
allowing someone to control the recoil a little better. But a very big reason is that when you go to the longer barrel, you get your front sight and your rear sight farther apart. You increase your sighting plane. And a lot of people, especially those who look at the sights, not being able to figure out which part of their trifocals they should look through, they can perceive that that longer barrel will help them shoot more accurately. Will it? That's a topic for another time. So until then, don't try this at home on what you call a professional, and thanks for watching the Barrel Length's Effect on Velocity video.